cloud. Okay, everyone, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming to our workshop. We apologize for a little bit of the of the delay. Uh, this is an insight sharing workshop about the challenge named cross chain collaboration. Uh, the challenge team consists of Tommy Astikainen, Felix, and me. Uh, we kind of uh, had a very similar idea, and we we created each one of us like created some sort of a challenge proposal and then we realized it's basically the same thing so we kind of band it together so yeah now we're now we're pushing for it um what are what are the you know what are some of the issues that we want to tackle with this you know challenge we have tribalism and maximalism they are harmful to say the least I'm sure that all of you, if you are here for longer than like five minutes, you've you've seen or heard some hate thrown your way because of either Cardano or maybe you are hating some other projects as well. And this is just the you know the reality that we're living in right now. But we are we actually believe that we are in a multi-chain future. We believe that. Uh, not only one chain will come out on top and everybody else are just gonna you know, collapse. We think that composability is one key to success within an ecosystem. Also composability is kind of kind of a prerequisite in open source software in, in different communities. So we, we want to... Jose, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Uh, same with the interoperability. You know, we want to see what other chains want to have to offer and what we can offer to them. We need initiatives to increase communication, coordination, collaboration, and definitely all, all let's say, L1 chains, level one blockchains have very similar common challenges that we can definitely try to solve together. So these are the sum of the ideas for projects to collaborate with. Um, this is like a, an alphabetical list of uh, possible, you know, chains that we kind of think are you know, potential collaborators in this challenge. Uh, already, we have Coty and Catalyst. We have the Coty uh, as a as a Catalyst native. Koti is also developing Jed. Um, Tommy is definitely active in the inside the Polkadot uh, Kusama community. So we have some, you know, we we made some connections there. Hopefully, you know, some people will join us from there. Felix also made contact uh, with IOTA community. We have something there, but this is not by any means like a, a list that that is limiting. We are looking to see, you know, from any chain how we can uh, work together, how we can, you know, learn from each other and how we can improve whatever we can. This Philip, just... can, we, can we actually stop here and ask the participants uh, what brings them here and uh, what are they excited about? Absolutely. How many of us are here? Please, if you want to talk, you can simply unmute yourself or you can raise your hand, whatever you feel more comfortable with. And I definitely see um, cross-chain collaboration options uh, and like Singularity Net is what you, what you mentioned. I'm really hoping to see some cool stuff between that kind of stuff. I don't see Decentraland here, but I'm also connecting the, with the, the Tertal and the way they run their proposal system and they're kind of interested to see that. Um, yep. Else, nice Steve. Nice Thank list. you. Thank you. Decentraland. Cool. Ilya. Yes. Um, well, I think it's a great idea to collaborate between blockchains. Uh, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I'm becoming a community advisor for this uh, <clears throat> fund. And I want to know more 
about the different challenges so I can assess the proposals better. Okay, fair, fair enough. That's very good. Patrick, I've seen Patrick is, uh, if I don't, if I recall a challenge team leader of open source developer ecosystem and uh, the developer ecosystem as well, right, Patrick? Uh, yeah. Sure. I'm uh, here by chance, uh, but this looks a uh, uh, pivotal topic, very important. I think we will be need to interact with other blockchain. I think Filecoin will be very important <clears throat> in terms of providing hosting for decentralized applications. And uh, I also think that Algorand is uh, a competitor and uh, I mean, you know, it's uh, this Algorand is the banking baby, and uh, we have something to learn from them. In terms of, they try to make it easier to connect with banks, and they made it easier by making available the developer to um, write uh, stuffs using the, the three most common languages that there are around. And this is something that we will be doing also in the future. So we will probably be able to write to score by using uh, other languages. But yeah, that's my that's answer. Thank you. Uh, things to watch. Who is unmuted? Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Matthias, please. Um, yeah, thank you. Just like Patrick, I think we can learn from other blockchains and uh, I am here to grab that opportunity and actually make, make that effort where uh, other blockchains, other ecosystems are ahead of Cardano uh, to identify those uh, areas and then uh, bring those learnings into Cardano and maybe even find a way to uh, grow the tent and essentially find opportunities for true uh, cross-chain collaborations because over the past um, five years I've been, oh, four and a half years or so, I've been uh, very deeply involved in Cardano, which is great, but at the expense of not paying too much attention to what other blockchains are doing. So this is a learning opportunity for me as well. Very nice, Matthias. Uh... Anyone else? Uh, I just want to. I just want to say I'm here to learn as well. That's it. Thank you. Nice, Peter. Thank you. Tell me, maybe <clears throat> you want to say your your vision vision of it. Yeah, I'm waiting for anyone else to say first, and then I'll take over. Anyone else who wants to say why they're here and what makes you excited? Oh, they are. They are intimidated because you are after them, you know. Okay. So, well, I'm I'm here to be nosy. Uh, I'm always here. You know, I learn through osmosis. So even if it's something that's over my head, I just kind of sit there and soak it in. And that's what and that's what I'm doing now, right? Just figuring out what's going on. Saying that's hello. Also very cool. Thank you for joining us. It seems like also this collaboration is something that we can always do better. And this is really like a macro, like a super high level way of doing it. And it's gonna need to trickle down into our everyday catalyst operations too. So I think it's really um, cool to see how these collaborations would develop and to be able to use the stuff that works the best in other arenas. Thank you, Nadia, yes. I'd, I'd like to add that, you know, there's also opportunity to collaborate with projects within Cardano uh, itself, right? I mean, I see a couple, Cody here, for example, but um, yeah, just wanted to put that in there. Yes, I wanted to say the, the same. I mean, I'm also here by chance, like Patrick, kind of, although I'm in the Catalyst School um, team, but I, as I look at this, uh, as, uh, I, I see kind of um, the links to, to one of the proposals that I helped um, mentor. And yeah, I think it's a great challenge. Maybe I should pay more attention to that. I'm glad I'm here anyway. Nice. 
talking to everybody for for sure. Yeah, that's definitely a great point. That um, also there's plenty of opportunity within the Cardano ecosystem to be cross-chain collabor collaborative. Uh, this challenge is not about that, but I have been part of the Empower meet meetups, for example, and they are really interested in seeing like what can they do with World Mobile, what can they do with Wire, what can they do with Indigo, whatever. So they are already having this mindset that we can uh, together solve a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, but this particular, okay, someone is unmuted. Session Cruz, can you mute yourself? Thanks. So um, if you look at this list, first of all, uh, you see that there's something missing. What is missing? One big chain kind of important. Bitcoin, is missing. Ethereum? Yes. So <laughs> we didn't want to include uh, Ethereum in this challenge because we thought that if we include Ethereum in this one, they will just come and gobble up all the all the money from the challenge. <laughs> so because of that, we created a separate challenge called the Great Migration, and that also got funded. So <laughs> we were thinking that if that doesn't get funded, then we can include Ethereum here. But now they have their own challenge, and that has actually a bigger budget than this. So if you have any Ethereum ideas for collaboration, you can go to that one. Um, I'm also part of that team, so <laughs> you can ask me things about that. Um, then another thing that is missing from here is the BS chain. And I that's that's kind of a personal opinion that I, I don't want, I didn't want to bring it here. BS chain is my way of saying uh, Biden smart chain. Um, so we try to focus on quality change. So if you want to bring Dogecoin or Shiba Inu, it, be, be careful, you might not get funded. Uh, but if you focus on any of these or as, as good quality as these, uh, you might have very, very good chances of getting funded. Uh, later on, we'll talk about the proposer uh, view or the proposer uh, aspect of this, but we will also look at the, like, what does it mean to be a, a CA who takes a look at these proposals? Uh, shall we go to the next slide, please? So the goal is to create an enriching open and safe environment where people from different communities can find common ground and share knowledge, resources, skills, ideas, and visions with one another. Now, if this is the goal, it will not happen overnight. So the idea is that this particular challenge in fund eight is just the beginning. So if we can get like one, two, or three uh, collaborations going in this particular fund, that's amazing. If we get more, even better. But we'll take it slow. We'll bring people from outside of Cardano ecosystem and in fund nine, we'll have a bigger uh, challenge together. Fund 10, it will be something that we can't even imagine. So we hope that this is a long-term solution and this is a platform to make something happen that has never been done before. Next slide. So to summarize, the challenge question is how might we create connections and collaboration between Cardano and other blockchains in the next six months? So we want to take this six months, let's say six to nine months perspective uh, to make something concrete happen uh, very early. So when you go proposing something for this challenge, uh, don't try to change everything at once, but start with baby steps. Try out something little. It can be a series of three events, or it can be a paper, or it can be a musical piece. It can be anything, like something small that you can deliver in six months. So why is it important? The interoper interoperability of blockchains and multi-chain awareness uh, guarantees shared success of the crypto economy as a whole. So we are in this together. Like so many times, like Philip mentioned, there is this rivalry between blockchains and it's, it's a little bit counterproductive because 
it's in, in the global scale, it's such a small drop in the ocean if we want to take over the banking system and if we want to uh, bring real fight solutions to the world if we want to connect billions of people and give them homes and whatnot we need to work together so what does success look like collaborative value creation between project catalyst and other communities so note that there's very strong focus on communities here you might not want to go to parity technologies which is behind polkadot you might want to go to web3 foundation instead you might not want to go to IOG, but you might want to go to Project Catalyst instead. So it's a community initiative. So we connect communities. We connect real people in real communities. And maybe you see in my, my shirt also, I'm wearing a color shirt proudly. So this is one of the Polkadot parachains. So it's, it's, it's really about connecting people together and realizing that we're in this together. Finally, these can be both technical and non-technical initiatives. So any artistic expression, any um, human connection, any way that you can imagine that, that people come together is welcome. It doesn't have to be technical bridges, but it can be. If you have really cool ideas of how to uh, bring something from outside of Cardano to Cardano or take something from Catalyst and bring it elsewhere, then you should do it. Yeah, I would just like to, sorry, Tommy, if I can just for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I would say if, any, if in any way, shape or form, we can decrease the hate and we can just, you know, talk to our fellow other chain supporters or users as colleagues like i always like to give the you know the comparison of if if you're an engineer working for bmw and an engineer and an engineer working for mercedes-benz do you hate each other or you're just both engineers that happen to be working for different companies right that's it's not a perfect analogy but that's kind of the level where i would like to see us happening Instead, if we talk to someone, hey, I'm working on whatever cosmos, ah, that's, you know, that's nothing that's not important because my blockchain is the best. So I would love to see non-technical solutions going into that direction. I would love to see technical solutions, bridges, but proper bridges, not bridges where we just, you know, lock up a Mount of Ada in someone's wallet. We have to trust someone, you know, for that I would love Real, real technical solutions where we can, in a true crypto way, you know, don't trust verify way, have a bridge to to other. Um, let's that's, before that's before opinion. yeah, thanks, Philip. Before moving on, let's take again comments. If people have any any thoughts at this point. No one. If not, uh, I'm not mm -hmm. raising the hand, but uh, I'm totally in uh, the idea of uh, you know these are colleagues. I mean, I'm not technical, so I'm not even a colleague. But the point is, uh, they are really people that are doing uh, working on the same topics. And the closer we are, the higher the uh, probability that we can uh, influence positively each other. And there should be some channel that uh, enable the intercommunication. Uh, typically, the problems are uh, technological. <clears throat> if you look at the list of technologies that you provided earlier, uh, tech, tech people would love to point a project, say, I don't know, Filecoin, and immediately go to the technical reason and how to do something. So the easier, so I'm really for discoverability and open source uh, done in the proper way, but basically the easier is for the others to get into your project and observe what you are doing, then the easier is that the other can take your material, but also they can start communicating with you. Uh, yeah, that's my theory. Maybe I'm wrong. 
I think it's a good insight. I, I just want to push back a little bit when you say that I'm not technical, so I cannot be a colleague. I think that's a bit self-deprecating, right? Just being here, you know, it doesn't, you don't need to be a programmer or a scientist to be working on a project. Like if we're, if we're working, let's say right now on a governance layer, you took your time from your day and you're here and you're taking the effort of questioning and thinking about these things. I'm sure there are people on other chains who are working on a sort of governance layer. So they can be your colleagues, right? I'm not saying, you know, a colleague has to be someone who is deep into science or deep into technical, you know, counting blocks, right? Thanks, I agree. Thanks. <laughs> Ilya, you have your hand up. Yes. Um, well, I think the problem between, <clears throat> let's say, fans of different blockchains is uh, the mindset of zero sum game. And this mindset kind of states that if my blockchains, if my blockchain is going to be successful, somebody else has to fail. And uh, maybe we should communicate and educate people that the tide raises all boats. So by collaborating, we can <clears throat> bring success to all blockchains that collaborate. Nice, nice, I like it. Marcel. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Marcel, sorry for being late. I just got the mail a little late. Um, yeah, so I was, uh, was wondering, um, we are we are looking at a summary and you were describing uh, the the very important um, problem of basically interoperability but not only in a technical way but also in a general way um, that is the that is basically I, I really enjoy it um, the way you talked about it but I wondered what is the you, you you kind of touched upon that in the last two questions so maybe it's always always already somewhat obsolete the question but um, how how would a non-technical way of um, creating the possibility to collaborate um, look like? And um, are technical bridges um, too basic, um, or or is this also something that might be relevant to the to the project uh, in any way? That were those were my two questions. Everything that increases communication, coordination, collaboration, it's relevant. And if you build a technical solution, which is bridging two chains, it's very relevant. Um, the extent that you can reach in six months, I'm not so sure about. So be very careful of promising, like over promising things. Scale it down and offer MVP, offer proof of concept, something that you can then build on in the next one. And okay. also, also use this as an opportunity to build your team. So bring those people together, not only from the Cardano community, but from other communities. So if you, if by the end of this, you have a team where you have people from two, three different chains, you have been highly successful. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Thank you. Um, okay, if uh, currently we have no more questions or comments. We can continue. Please feel free to interrupt at any point. This is basically, you know, a conversation. So, uh, you know, go go right ahead. So some of the key metrics that we um, that we uh, defined. Something that we would really like to see. Uh, we started with mainnet and testnet transaction value volume growth right so this is for like uh, technical implementations if if uh, we can increase the number of transactions going on of course that's good that's good for for cardano uh, number of proposals including participants from other blockchain communities number of technical implementations connecting cardano to other blockchains ideas from other chains implemented by catalyst um 
project and for other chains implemented on Cardano, uh, Catalyst Creative Solutions, you know, all of these are metrics that kind of attempt to quantify, first of all, the technical activities, because those are much easier to quantify. But then we kind of attempted to quantify the interpersonal connection, right? Um, you see, number of uh, events, workshops, sessions. I mean, uh, workshop in itself is not really a great measure of success, or, or but it's it's something that you can measure, right? Uh, a measure that I would love to see is the you know amount of respect that we that we as a community get from other communities or the amount of interaction and the tone of, and changing of the tone of voice in cardano and learning about ideas from other chains and and talking about other chains within our community with respect and with interest and with fervor you know not as something that ah they're doing it like that so so that's how I see it. Maybe Tommy can say a bit more about it. Yeah, I, I would just like to come back to Ilya's point about the zero sum mindset that it's very prevalent and we are not saying that it's going to be easy. We have already tried going randomly into some com communities of other blockchains and saying hi there and some people, they are outright hostile when they hear Cardano. So we we are not gonna like we we don't have any illusions that it's going to be easy um so any of these things that you use you can think of it as an end in itself hey i organized a workshop yay tick <laughs> or that <laughs> so you can also use it as a as a method of communicating that we are in this together so if you're organizing a workshop, for example, or any any event, make sure that you have a YouTube influencer or two with you there. So they can then create a story about it and, and get some quality content for their channel. So that way you get those communities talking about it. And even if they would be initially against it, they're like, shit, the Cardano guys are starting something like this and they're actually cool. So think very strategically when you do these things and think like how can i do this small thing and have the maximum impact yeah i i agree completely and uh, yes the hostility sometimes i agree with uh, with tommy hostility sometimes shows up i try to not return with hostility i almost never do i just you know walk away if that's what i see i don't think it serves us you know if we start you know, insulting back, comparing things. It's, it's just, you know, I don't think it serves anything. So keep that in mind. But uh, here we made a couple of slides like from different perspectives. So uh, Tommy, how about you do the proposer perspective and I can do a CA perspective and then we can, you know, you can tell me sure. what I mess up eventually. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. So we already talked a lot about this, so no point uh, using a lot of time here, but... Proposer or me? Sorry? I'm sorry, I, uh, my, my internet is not stable. So I thought you were not talking, but you were talking, sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Um, so this slide is about what ideas you have. So the key point is that any other ideas. And here are some ideas that we thought of, of the directions that it could take. So it can be these technical implementations or it can be governance ideas because this is a hot topic, not only for us, but for pretty much all the chains at the moment. Everyone wants to be decentralized. Everyone wants to build a DAO, so, or many DAOs, and they, want, they need tooling for those and whatnot. So that is definitely a hot topic at the moment. And it's not just a fad, it's actually shaping the way we are going to operate in the future, how our children will be operating. If we're successful, they will never work a day in their life. 
um, for corporations. They will work for some sort of decentralized organizations. Um, they can be already successful projects that are expanding from other chains to Cardano or vice versa. They can be something that has been catalyst funded before, for example, and then expanded elsewhere. Um, they can be oracles or other tools that interpret and interact cross-chain data. They can be um, think tanks that address issues that are common to both or all chains involved. So it doesn't have to be bilateral. It can be multilateral that there's many different chains involved. Uh, one idea would be to take one topic and discuss that with like five, six different chains that might be interesting. It can be common research, education, outreach, innovation projects. Um, these can be podcasts, hackathons, webinars, communication hubs, educational resources, whatnot. So apart from these, what are other ideas that you start having at the moment? Just freely suggest anything. If someone steals your idea, it's great. It means that they're ready to collaborate with you. No one has any ideas? This is always sad for me. Like when we ask a question, no one's answering. I don't know if we're doing a good job or something like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, you should wait a minute because we need time to think. Exactly. <laughs> okay. okay. You, you're doing a phenomenal job, I think. Oh, that's nice, Simon. But this was the point of it was to guilt trip people into saying something, and it worked. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marcel, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you do a fine job. I just uh, needed some time to, to read up and to think for a second. Um, yeah, I, I could imagine to um, just out of, from my hip, I am um, working uh, with a state channel framework, which I could uh, well imagine. Currently, it's somewhat blockchain agnostic. I could imagine making it work for Cardano a little bit better because usually it was EVM based. And um, we are already thinking about or we are already building some bridges between um, several EVM chains and also some singular Polkadot um, parachain. So I could I could think in that direction uh, for, for, from my side. I think that would be cool. And yeah, but I, I'd, I'd have to boil it down for six months a little bit, but I'd have to check. But that that's what came to my mind. Sounds great. Uh, Matthias. Yeah, so nothing new really. Um, so this slide covers actually the ideas that I come, came up with uh, at the last town hall's uh, after breakout room, which was very, very good, right? So we have adertar.me, right? Which was a um, catalyst funded proposals. And one idea is of course to extend that to other blockchains as well, right? So it's a very, very low, not necessarily low effort, but it, uh, I'm not sure about the impact, but it's something that I would like to have assessed. Um, we're thinking of uh, several ha hackathons. Maybe we are the first one that actually runs smoothly in the crypto space because uh, so far we, we still have yet to receive a single ADA or US dollar from the hackathons of last year that we won, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, and of course, I think something like, um, you know, Plutus for Solidity devs, uh, I'm not sure if that would be part of the big migration. Um, maybe it would be, uh, maybe it would be fitting here, but I'm really, really trying to, you know, think more about the idea of, okay, I, I mentioned an after town hall uh, breakout session last week, that I, I have the idea of united blockchains, but I still don't know how that looks like. <laughs> but it's that's something that I would like to explore and collaborate on. Uh, as you might know, governance is something that I'm very invested in. Yes. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, yes, united blockchains does, does sound awesome. I, I want the t-shirt already. It sounds like a football club. <laughs> there, there's your there's your first 
money, you know, just get money from Tommy for a t-shirt and have some basic fun. Um, well, apparently Polgarot is ready to pay a lot for a football t-shirt, so <laughs> if you yes. heard the rumor. <laughs> yes, yes. Also, World Mobile Top, but okay. Um, oh, I thought Marcel had his hand up. Was it from before? Yeah, sorry, I just forgot to put it oh. down. No, no problem. Okay, Tevo, go ahead. Yeah, so I've been mingling in the Decentraland community, and I think that would be interesting opportunity for them to join her, even though they are mainly um, focused on put, building like a metaverse uh, uh, like assets and something you will see in virtual reality. On the other side, they're also improving their governance methods, how to make proposals, how to can delegate each other. And they have like an in-team to build these kinds of uh, software. And, but even in both cases, I think they have would be quite amazing if they are going to like create a land or um, advertisements for the Cardano specific uh, hubs or events or art or anything on the virtual reality they're building. So I'm like looking in from that perspective and, and on the other side also to cross pollinate with the ideas, how could we improve our um, governance mechanics? For example, they're using their first stage is polling mechanism where we have inside stage. And I'm, I think that would be interesting if you could throw in an idea and have some a quick poll to we want this proposal to be created a proposal out of that or not and such experiments like that. And yeah, Joker, take it away. You had your hand up. Yes, no, I was just thinking you're talking about the uh, cross chain and everything. And I was thinking if you had like a uh, Twitter space, I'm seeing them pop up all the time where you just pull people in from other chains and then that can be a doorway in to get to collaborating and starting with something as simple as an NFT. Well, that sounds like a proposal for this challenge. So go ahead and start. Very, very much so, yes. Dana, Dana. Dana, please, yeah. Hi, guys. I just joined in. Um, I just got out of a meeting, but it, perfect timing because that one of my questions, I was trying to join this uh, this workshop before it ended um because that was exactly one of my questions so not only is there a cross chain collaboration challenge this fund but also a film um and creative challenge this fund and i'm wondering because what we're what we're planning to do for our film is do a cross train a cross chain collaboration nft drop for our our first major collection and utilize different community managers to oh, do and video. Hello? Hello? Go ahead. It's like a, a smooth flu. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm just wondering, is that something that I can propose in this challenge? Because like I really want to do some cross-chain drops, but in the in the whole spirit of this is as we're creating a community, like we're gonna have one discord that's gonna have a bunch of channels for a couple of the different chains we're gonna work with, but we're all gonna be working together and they're gonna be exposed to what we're doing with Catalyst. And also because the movie is going to be featuring um, Cardano. I, I'm just wondering if that's something that I can propose in that challenge. Um, if we go back to the metrics, let's say, uh, why is it important? What does success look like? Collaborative, <clears throat> collaborative value creation between Project Catalyst and other communities. Both technical and non-technical initiatives are welcome. We have number of events, workshop sessions arranged, number of permanent initiatives and things like that. So if you bring value to you know, cross-chain systems, I think you're proposed. You're welcome. 
Yeah, and also like if you have bigger projects where you have film aspects and then you have these cross-chain aspects, you can divide that into, you can have part of it in, in the film challenge and part of it here, just make sure that they are independent. So if only one gets funded, then you can still move forward. Yes, definitely. This is Thank a you. common strategy. I saw somebody put in the chat that Victor is handling this. Is that, or maybe I just, I'm jumping in on the chat at a later date. I'm uh, using my see. Sorry to, to clarify, uh, what is, uh, Victor does many things. What is uh, Victor Corsino is handling uh, that specific uh, collaboration between the Haskell and Coffee proposal and then the Dev Hub India uh, proposal. So um, just a note for Philip to reach out to, to Victor. Oh, okay, yeah, thanks. It's, it's a bit unconnected. There's, yes. there's, there's actually 16 of them, the 16 victors going, hustling around the world and doing different things. <laughs> yeah, so the, exactly. The, the victors are now the, the new Steves. Yes, yes. Okay, so here we uh, finally come back to this, like what are the common challenges that we have in Web3 or some like to call it the internet of value. And I really like that. Um, so what we are building here is Web3 or internet of value, which is um, a, leap, a leap forward from the social media driven Web2. And the common challenges or, or hot topics for uh, everyone are, here and there's there's probably others but some of them are here so as mentioned in the beginning it's a drop in the ocean like com common people don't know about blockchain and if they do know they think it's criminal this is one of dana's points actually in in her <laughs> previous proposal um so awareness and understanding is definitely something that is needed and uh they the the no normal people won't care if they're banking solutions or their real fi solutions are running on, on Polkadot or if they're running on Cardano. They just want a smooth experience and and to get there, we need to spread the awareness and understanding. Now we lost the slides, did we? I'm sorry, my internet is a bit okay, I will unstable. Say. Okay. I will share, I will share. Yeah. So as mentioned, everyone wants to be a DAO. Uh, why is that? Well, there's the business reason that you don't want to be sued by the SEC. <laughs> so if you're decentralized, it's very hard to get sued. Um, and the, the other part is that it just makes so much sense in, in these kind of decentralized systems that we're building. And the normal corporate structures, they are ill-fitted into the new reality. So everyone is experimenting with new kind of governance structures and, and that is something that we could explore together. Uh, culture, diversity and inclusion, that is very normal for the Fortune 500 companies, but in tech space, in the startup space, and especially in block, blockchain space, there's still a lot to do in that. Um, unfortunately, it's still uh, dominated by young white males in the West. And um, there's so much that we need to do to get the, all, the, all the voices heard. Uh, also, because it makes business sense, because we need to understand what the actual challenges in the society are that we need the solutions for. I mean, we can continue making nice NFT pictures and selling them to each other, but there might be some actual problems that uh, blockchain can, can solve. So that is one part. And the other part is that if we want quality innovation, then we need to have uh, a variety of different perspective. And the only way to get that is diversity. So we need inclusive um, cultures uh, full of belonging and, and uh, sharing and listening and this kind of things. So not only for Cardano, but for everyone else. Also, uh, well, innovation decision-making already kind of mentioned there, collaboration tools and platforms, everyone needs better tools. Um, it's kind of funny that we are 
running decentralized organizations on centralized tools. So if we can build something together that can be used cross-chain, that's amazing. Um, incentivized participation, well, duh. That's why we are here. Uh, we are selfish human beings who want to do something together because it makes sense. So how do we do this? What are the different uh, methods of doing this? What does Cosmos do differently? What does Algorand do differently? What does Koti do differently? How, how do we bring these different methods of incentivi incentivization together and what can we try in different chains? Cost and efficiency, how do we do things so that they make sense and there's not too much overlap with the things that we do. Uh, regulation and compliance. Um, yeah, you don't want to be sued by the SEC, right? But uh, this is also a big opportunity because once there is a reasonable regulation in place, then the big money will come in and then things start happening. Security and privacy, of course, everyone knows that blockchain space is ripe for scammers. And luckily, so far, Cardano has been pretty good in that sense. Not, not much scamming happening, but just wait, it's coming. So we need to learn together and we need to become stronger together. That was very quickly run through. We could organize a week full of conferences <laughs> around these topics. Um, Let's stop here. What are the thoughts that this this brings to mind? Dana, you still have your hand up, so go ahead. Oh, I do. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, huh. Actually, I, I guess yes. The collaboration tools and platforms and all of that. There's actually a. Um, you know, kind of an offline conversation happening between a few of us um, who are helping to mobilize some of that um, in the women's space, although it's not anything official as of right now. And then, um, yeah, I, I definitely think the culture and diversity, um, it's interesting because there was uh, somebody who is from IOG had a conversation with um somebody else that we that we are talking with um about you know how do we do you attack it all at once or can we you know section off parts of the diversity conversation in order to make sure that the people within certain groups still feel safe so um yeah those are just my 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 two my two comments on that um yeah just because if we're if you go to you know, conquer the whole world. Um, sometimes it's a little too big versus trying to, you know, uh, take it in chunks a little bit. So, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think this is a good list. If you want to initiate those conversations with people outside of Cardano, you can give them this list and ask, are you acing all of these or do you have some challenges? So, if they have challenges, then we can talk. But also, if they are really good in some of these, then we can also talk because then we can learn from them. Also, on a, just on a little bit of a side note, I, if someone wants to organize a conference, if cross chain or not cross chain conference, I am very, I'm very up for that. Especially if it's in Europe, I'm looking forward to meeting people for like two years. So. Maybe maybe a conference like a something. real one, like meeting, like yeah, yeah, like fresh. real people. Yes, like shaking hands, you know. Like oh, is that even possible anymore? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 it is a big challenge. Yeah. <laughs> well, funny should you say because Philip and me, we, we both come from the same organization, same same student organization, and we had a lot of conferences there, and we know how to organize those. <laughs> and. I would just like to be a delegate, a participant. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick. I was just proposing last month uh, to have uh, a Cardano event in Milan because I, I organized um, an Eclipse event in Milan. It was really amazing. I, I, I really, <clears throat> I'm really following international events. 
probably since 2012. And uh, I really loved uh, organizing an event, so it'd be lovely. But one of the uh, points that were raised, <clears throat> it was uh, the following. <clears throat> what if you organize an online event, sorry, a physical event, uh, and uh, at a certain point for COVID restrictions, you can't uh, deliver the physical event anymore. And the suggestion, uh, specific suggestion in that case was, you should at least provide an equivalent, so while still keeping the funding, you still, you still have to provide an equivalent uh, online event. And then of course, inform the community and uh, uh, give back if you received more than uh, you need. That was the, the general idea. That's yeah, that's one approach. The other approach is risk avoidance. So if if one month passes that no one mentions the C word, then you can start organizing. <laughs> and Milan is also very close to where I live. So Patrick, uh, you have my vote, even if you don't have a proposal yet. <laughs> where do you live? In Croatia, in the Ecuador. Oh, bellissimo, in Croatia. Bellissimo, si, si. I, I fell in love. Uh, I, I was at Medulin. Uh, really yes, like. that's very close. Patrick, Patrick, remember this is recorded. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I stopped here. <laughs> yeah. Um, did anyone else want to comment? I think that's actually a great idea. Imagine you could have like five different blockchains organizing a conference in the same city at the same time without mentioning to the delegates, but then the last day just bring everyone together. That would be awesome. For a group fight in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're joking. We're joking. But like even a main Cardano track with, let's say, a side track of other chain, or depending on the scope, you know, it can be a multi track of everything. It is a really good idea. And I would pay anywhere in Europe to, to come. Also, there is probably, there should not be a problem to find some. Uh, I would say corporate sponsors, like we did Tommy for international conferences in ISEC. If ISEC could do it, I think uh, a blockchain conference could do it. But okay, we're straining off the topic. I, I, I apologize. Yeah, Matthias wanted to add something. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, what, what Patrick said about uh, the equivalent, right? Um, because what, what this pandemic has shown that actually it, it it has a potential to include a lot more people uh, in terms of uh, ability, right? Uh, so some folks just do not have the option to show up physically to a space. So um, doing things virtually uh, on top of, you know, having a the same kind of information presented at a physical conference, I think that that is important uh, for inclusion as well. Um, yeah, just wanted to mention that. Um, one thing though, since, since you mentioned um, corporations, right? Um, I think w one thing that we look at or what has been mentioned is that DAOs make it difficult to sue individuals. But um, as you know, we incorporated as it became clear that we would receive catalyst funding. And that is for our protection, right? We are, I'm based in California in the US, everyone sues everyone here. Um, and we are in the legal tech space and in the crypto space. So it's kind of like a double whammy. And I think be, as a team member within the corporation, there's a lot more legal protection, uh, even if you work in or on a DAO. So it would be also interesting to see what the, play, what the uh, role of corporations will be, because I think um, we still have the tendency to villainize uh, corporations. And uh, while there's you know, many good reasons to do that, I want to acknowledge that uh, not all corporations are equal and it is just an organizational structure. And ultimately within organizations, people work in organizations. And if you look at who are the shareholders, then um, that should be taken into account as well. So. Just wanted yeah, to and pri private limited was an amazing innovation when it came out. 
and it has lasted the test of time. So there's something to it that actually works. Um, in the interest of time, uh, Philip, would you like to take the next slide? Yes, sure. Yes, so um, we gave a little bit of a proposal perspective. So now we would like to give the community advisor perspective. So if I am a CA here, how do I, you know, how do I approach this? Uh, familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with the proposal subject and only assess proposals that you feel comfortable assessing. This is maybe, you know, even a general statement for, for CAs in any challenge. But here, um, I, I, I would like to emphasize this because, you know, um, I, we don't want to really, uh, let's say, offend someone if we don't understand them properly. We don't want to chase away potential collaborations. Let's keep in mind that maybe, you know, if you are coming from a different blockchain and you're coming to propose in Catalyst, you're taking a leap of faith, you're taking a risk. You're joining a community that you don't know and you don't know how accepted you will be. And if we treat some of these people unfairly, maybe they'll get an even worse, you know, um, feeling about Cardano and uh, they will have a worse opinion. So unless we fully understand what we're doing, maybe it's best to kind of, you know, be more careful than, than usual. Uh, keep an open mind to change, willing co to collaborate, and do not let personal bias affect your assessment. Like you know, like Tommy said, with his BS chain, you know, uh, I, I share quite a lot of that sentiment. But uh, I would be conscious in my mind that if I share that sentiment, that maybe it's better that I don't, uh, you know, advise on the proposals, or if I do, to be, you know damn sure that I have a negative sentiment towards something and that I need to keep it in check, right? That's that's an important thing because we all have our own biases. We all have our own ideas and, uh, you know, just try to keep it in check as much as you can because the last thing we want is like, you know, someone applies for a, a bridge to, I don't know, uh, uh, Polkadot, and then someone says, aha, Polkadot stole Doroboros, get away from us, you know, stupid things like that, because then it just accentuates the problem that we already have, you know, in, in the whole ecosystem. Try to familiarize yourself uh, with the project's ecosystems outlined in the proposal, if for nothing else, to increase your own knowledge and your own experience, and of course, to enrich and make and uh, make sure that proposers are welcome in our ecosystem. Comment on proposals, uh, because if we comment, uh, proposers feel that they are welcome here, that people hear them and see them and want to interact with them. And this can mean a lot, right? This can mean a lot for someone iterating. This can mean a lot for someone's whole perception of Catalyst, of Cardano. So, you know, let, let's try to be engaging. And all of this is just, you know, make newcomers feel welcome, introduce them to the collaborative culture of Catalyst that we have. And as always, as any time, read the campaign brief carefully and ensure proposals are in line with it. You know, when all is said and done, we cannot always be, you know, warm and cuddly to the, to the proposers. You know, if they are not aligned, we need to have a good rationale and explain to them how they are not aligned and try to try to guide them in the right direction, let's say. Uh, yeah, so this is, Tommy, this is shortly for from me. Uh, do so you want to take him back? Do you want me to? I'll, I'll, run, I'll run through these three slides and then we can talk about the CA perspective as a whole. So sure. there's nothing different about this. Sure. It, it, follows the same logic as any other challenge, but maybe certain things to point out. Um, so definitely like what Philip said, you might need to go an extra mile, uh, making sure that people who are very unfamiliar with Catalyst, if they come to this, this uh, ecosystem as a proposer or, or a collaborator, then you probably need to do some 
uh, handholding in the beginning, but I think it it really pays off in the end if you if you help people to join. Um, so impact, how well does the proposal contribute to increasing collaboration, coordination and communication between various blockchain ecosystems? Um, same things that you would read in the guide are here. Then feasibility, how likely is it that the team is able to successfully implement the proposal? Um, here, maybe additional factor would be the cross-chain nature of the team. So if you have uh, people from different chains as part of the team, that's really, really, really amazing. Um, so evidence of relevant skills and experience, it might be one person who is a uh, master of all chains. <laughs> but if you have more people from different chains, that probably is a bene benefit. Um, but yeah, take a look at uh, how how many people are needed and and uh, what qualities should they have and whether this team seems to have those or if they know the road how to get those people. Same things, how to evaluate the plan. We will share all these materials afterwards so you can look at these and then of course like look at the official guides, CA guides. And here, maybe in the explanation of technical aspects, if needed, if we are talking about other types of change that people are not so familiar with, um, it makes sense to open it up a bit more. Not only uh, nice diagrams and, and white papers, but maybe even like videos and, and human lay, layman terms to explain things. Then auditability, is the information enough to audit progress and success of the proposal? What can the community expect? So as I mentioned, it's good to focus on that six to nine month uh, timeline and deliver something that can be easily audited and measured through that. All right, so now is the last time that we we can have a chat today, but here's our contact details and we have an after town hall session also on Wednesday. So be welcome to that. And I also want to advertise the great migration uh, challenge. So if you have anything for Ethereum or if, if you want to, bring tooling to to people in ethereum or if you want to make it easier for ethereum developers to come to cardano then the great migration is is a good challenge for that all the other chains are welcome in this challenge um, does anyone have any questions regarding the community advisor uh, role uh, it was mentioned at least by Ilya in the be beginning that you want to be a good good community advisor. So I hope this helped and I hope there was some nuggets of wisdom here. Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of info that you guys covered and uh, angles that you gave me to think about when going over these and reviewing it. Um, I'm quiet because I'm at work, but I appreciate you guys doing this and taking time out of your day for it. Yeah, thanks. So most likely on Wednesday, we will have a very similar session. So you might want to choose some other room if you feel that you understood everything. So if you just want to come for after banter, then <laughs> we can stay there for a bit longer also. Uh, there's some hands up from Nadia. Yeah. Uh, thank you both so much. This is such a fantastic um, overview and just a great way to gain your perspective on this opportunity for um, really taking it to the next level. I'm I'm interested to hear from each of you and anyone else who's in here about what you think um, 
what you think some of the ways to help encourage people to consider this as an option who maybe are looking at it maybe more sort of like a inside work right now within Catalyst. Um, do you think that uh, is your experiential sense that um, people are are coming to consider this once they've reached a certain phase and working on other things? Do you think it's more um, that people might reach out to uh, look for people in another ecosystem who are focused on similar things and start that way? Um, you know, I know there's a sense of competition thing that, you know, needs to be hurled, obviously, but probably would be done before someone considered taking this route. So what are some ways that you think about um, helping people understand the value of doing of doing a project like this and um, that they might start to see the path that they could take to, to get it started? Okay, that was a very multifaceted question. <laughs> I'll try right, to- Pack it all in one question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say if you don't get it, you are not ready to propose in this challenge. Um, if you feel, if you instinctively feel that this is for me, then you are probably at that level. Uh, I'm not saying that you are somehow a better person if you think cross chain is cool. Uh, I'm just saying that it's it's a certain mindset that people need to have. And as we mentioned in the beginning, this is the first time this kind of challenge is there. So. It's not, it cannot be even expected that like majority of people would be ready for something like this. So the whole reason of having this in fund aid is to start things, is to start laying the basis. And I'm 100% sure that this will be successful. There will be something amazing that comes out of this. Even though it's small, it will be amazing. And once people see what kind of collaboration is possible. And once we open this up in Fund9 with hopefully a little bit bigger budget and more people from more chains being co-proposers, then it's just up to us what, what comes out of that. And I think it's that action when people see the action and when they see the results that starts shaping people into, into thinking that, Bloody hell, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with, uh, with Tony. I would say cross-chain is, is a bit, it's it's another level of, of complication, I would say. Like you have to be, you kind of have to understand both sides if it's two chains or, you know, three sides if it, or more if it's more, more chains. And uh, you you kind of need to have that mindset of hey it's really important that we work together with the guys from across the pond right and uh, <laughs> it requires patience because I'm I'm guessing that there will be doubts from both sides you know and uh, but that's fine also that's perfectly fine because like Tommy said once that door opens once people understand okay these are not you know monsters that are on cardano these are just people like us and we have the same problems and we're tackling the same issues we approach them maybe from different angles but basically we're doing the same thing then we can finally you know and hopefully this is the first step in in that direction that's that's kind of my opinion and i i want to add because um you see that there's three names here and and Everyone knows Felix, <laughs> uh, in Catalyst at least. Um, but Felix has done a wonderful job already, and he is doing a wonder wonderful job um, in bringing in people from outside of Cardano. And uh, we wanted to keep this team small in the beginning because we're kind of holding seats warm for people who come from outside of Cardano. So if in Fund9, we can have five to seven people who are from other chains. That's brilliant. Then, then we have something really cool cooking that is not only people from Cardano who are running this challenge. Uh, Tevo, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was wondering maybe since there was a community advisor call out, uh... Then I will chill. Uh, a Catalyst school will have sessions next week, so probably 
Uh, in Wednesday, we will announce a new schedule. And so who is interested to go and assess proposals or in comment, and uh, you just to, and you're new to it, and you just to join. Even if you are actually already done it, it never goes <laughs> bad if you just join and learn something new and just refresh your memory. Still <clears throat> show your things. And yeah, maybe maybe one more point that you know Catalyst is not ready. <laughs> There's all the time like really cool innovations happening. And there's a lot of debate. There's a lot of perspectives thrown around. So we can just make this perspective even richer by bringing the cross-chain um, perspective here. So if we're able to um, collaborate with people from outside of Cardano, then we might be able to see some of our own issues a bit more clear. And we might see solutions that we never thought of before. Matthias? Yeah, here's an idea since, uh, yes, Catalyst is on chain, but also not really, uh, not on Cardano. It would be an interesting proposal to say, hey, you know what? Voting on another chain, voting on Catalyst proposals on another chain that is ready. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to be built there, and maybe it's not a mini step. But then again, from my perspective, right? Um, building on Cardano, very painful. <laughs> and uh, I, I have that assumption because of that experience, even though you know, I uh, never went beyond the point of you know, looking at developer documentation on other chains and it looks a lot simpler, uh, but maybe it is something that can be achieved in six months or so. Or, or maybe even less to say, hey, you know, voting on Catalyst or voting on cross-chain collaboration solutions can actually happen on another chain than Cardano. That would be interesting as well. Yeah, and uh, if, if not entirely, uh, there can be some like spot solutions that we can take from other chains. Like this one called Governor, Governor DAO or something, and they have like facial recognition KYC or something like that. So. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> why not? All right. I nominate Patrick to do that because he mentioned he's not not technical, which is nonsense. <laughs> I, I, I didn't say I'm not technical. Uh, I'm just uh, saying that I don't have uh, definitely the level of knowledge that maybe you or Matthias can have. Um, yeah, that, that, that is what I mean. Yeah, I was actually uh, de-evaluating myself for for a reason. Yeah. I think Patrick is uh, for sure aware of what he doesn't know, and that makes him better than a lot of us who think that we know. So, Patrick, I support Matthias's decision to 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 do for to nominate you for that. <laughs> no, please don't. But yeah. Uh... There's, there's some technical limitations that we we, we cannot uh, be blind to, like just just the fact that Cardano is EUTXO UTXO model and many others are account based models and and that that kind of like technical limitations are there. So which kind of technical limitations? Sorry for going into the specific. No, you like see, like, like from the the accounting model. EU um, I'm not a technical person, like you're not a technical person, but just just like the foundational design of Cardano is so different than than many others. Plus, there's the fact that everything is built in house. <laughs> Pretty much everything is uh, built from scratch. So, in a way, it's a good thing, but it's also a hindrance in in some instance is that uh, it's not so readily integratable with others maybe so we we shouldn't think that things can move super fast but we can start those in this fund Research. yeah I, I think i think what uh, what uh, tom is saying let's say you cannot you know use a code from 
an EVM best based chain and then just kind of, you know, adapt it a little bit and run it here because the underlying philosophy is different. But about the voting, what, what would come to mind, like we take the snapshot for the Jorman Gander chain, like we like we vote on Cardano, we can take that same snapshot and, uh, you know, mint some tokens of, of that version somewhere else, basically creating a simplified bridge, you know, on some other chain, and we can do voting with that, right? That will work. Um, I don't... I'm not presuming that I can do that, but that's, you know, that's kind of a, a basic idea that can be tried out. Why not? I think there was a rumor some months ago that this DAO specific tooling organization called Aragon would be venturing out to, to Cardano. So there might be already these initiatives that could now be brought in with this, with this fund. Sure, I, I, I saw also M Labs is doing, they got funded to do some DAO tools, voting tools, voting DAP, something like that. So I I don't know. It's it would be definitely interesting. At least the research of comparing how do how does voting work on other chains, right? I would I would read that work, you know, if there is a systematization of knowledge work, how voting works on, on other protocols i would i would read that 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 can be a proposal in itself and then there are some initiatives that are hugely ambitious for a reason because they have superior technology so this is what matthias was saying in the beginning that he wants to learn from those that are ahead of cardano and one of those is my personal favorite remark they are um, nft platform that is very much ahead of uh, everyone else and they don't hide it so bruno who is the leader of remark he's saying that in two years time everyone will be using remark based technology <laughs> so maybe something we should look into <laughs> remark yeah rmrk.app i don't see it on the list well the list was just some ideas <clears throat> When, when you about, look at when you look at that one slide, don't do think it's an exhaustive you list. Can ask, you can ask Bruno to join. Ah, uh, he's a busy man. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, we we can ask to bridge communities. Yes. Yeah, but there, there have to be a mutual interest. And uh, as uh, as Cardano, one of the quite impressive ways, besides being uh, totally paper-based, so academic paper-based, so the technology is demonstrated before being used, is that uh, the Cardano community is inclusive. And this is really, <clears throat> I think it's going to be the strong point. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a good way to end this because um, we have used one and a half hours now. So thank you everyone. Uh, this was fantastic. I really liked how it went. A uh, lot of perspective, a lot of uh, participation from everyone. So we'll continue uh, the discussion on Wednesday after town hall. And Philip, maybe you want to close it off. You have some final last words. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Tommy, for the presentation. Um, and thank you for all the interactions. Hopefully, we'll see you on the, on the town hall. And even more, hopefully, we'll see proposals and comments and in, you know, interactions with other chains and with a lot, a lot of projects. Uh, we will. Uh, the recording is in the cloud, I think. So the recording will be available as soon as we take it off the cloud and um, we'll, we'll share the link.